Here we have the energy zone manifold. This is the smaller of the standard units and energy four. By four it means you have two zones at the bottom and potential to a boiler on the left, boiler on the right. It actually can do a lot more than four things. But anyway, let's move on. We'll just have a brief look at what exactly it does. A, inside the 25 mil thick high density insulation, you have a metal pressure tested uh, manifold. And inside that manifold, you have three areas. The top area is where you would introduce any heat from any form of heat source, high temperature, low temperature, whatever. And then in the middle, you have a bypass chamber, which would return the water that hasn't been used by the zones back to a high temperature boiler. On the bottom, we have a return chamber, and this captures the water coming back from any zones having lost energy and allows that to be returned back from either left or right or any of the ports entering that lower chamber back to say a condensing boiler or a heat pump. So very simply, top chamber is the high temperature flow input from any appliance. Mid chamber or bypass chamber would be say for instance a conventional oil boiler, conventional gas boiler or maybe a solid fuel appliance where you want a high temperature going back to the appliance so you don't form condensation uh, inside the, the chamber, the burning chamber and damage the appliance. And then on the bottom chamber, this is what makes the energy zone unique. This is exactly where you catch the coolest water to return to boilers that need low temperature. For example, heat pumps, condensing boilers and the like. When you see there is a bypass uh, chamber of exits on the right hand side of the internal waveguide at the top. What this does is that if water flows in from a boiler, say from the left port here, are from the right traveling through a pipe that passes through the unit, they both meet this baffle here, turn back and then flow from left to right. So a boiler flowing from the right goes from left to right and a boiler going from the left still flows internally from left to right. And this arrow represents a 100% open bypass. So there's very, very little resistance inside the unit. At the same time, if you have zones operating, you can then use the return bypass. So if, for example, your zones are coming back in and you want to feed the return water back to say a solid fuel boiler or a conventional gas boiler or whatever, then the bypass on the bottom will allow water to flow both directions. It's dynamic in that if there's an excess of water coming from the boiler, it'll flow downwards and back to say a condensing boiler heat pump. And if it's needed to go the opposite direction, then the bottom bypass does exactly that. Neutral point of a heating system is probably the most important thing to understand because that's where you would join your safety equipment like safety valves or system cold feeds or filling points, your pressure vessels, and also at that area where you would, the water would be traveling um, at the slowest, having come through from a narrower pipe into a bigger area air will, uh, any air in the area will start to slow down uh, around the neutral point. So this area is also um, critical for where, which you got the pump location. If you're pumping to a boiler from a manifold, from the energy zone manifold, you pump on the return connection to the boiler. But remember the flow to a boiler is the return pipe. Also, if you're pumping to a zone, for example, a zone would be used one of the pipes on the bottom, you'd pump on the flow out through the pump around the zone resistance and back in. So you always pump from the manifold outwards whenever that's possible. At the top of the manifold, there are three additional um, ports. The left hand one could be for a temperature sensor. In fact, it could be a boiler input. It could even be a zone output. So if you were to take a zone out, you take your flow, pump, and back around and into one of the returns, maybe the, an unused boiler return or side return, or into one of the returns at the end. This center connection at the top of the tree, center of the tree, but not necessarily center of the manifold, is the air trap or the uh, venting um, port. 
that you would put an automatic air vent here or an open expansion vent or any way of introducing or exiting air from the system would be taken from here because within that you have a trap created that catches any air bubbles and allows them to escape. So if the manifold is being filled with water from a boiler, the top chambers you'll notice if you touch it on the outside when the system is operating will be hotter than any water coming back from the zones which of course will have lost its heat and that's precisely what this is really really good at. It allows the hottest water to be separated from the coolest water and allows each of those to be used for their respective duties. For example, the hottest water would feed zones, the return water, the coolest water would feed the uh, boilers that needed the coolest return water. If you took away the metal so and just look what you have is two distinctly different temperatures of water. You have a constant deaeration unit because this is such a bigger area compared to the pipe feeding it. The water velocity slows down, air travels to the top and every time the water passes through the manifold it deaerates. So uh, again you can see where an automatic air vent would be fitted at the top uh, to release the air and you can now also see uh, on the left you can have an input from a boiler say at the top left hand side or the top right hand side or in fact you could have two boilers one at the left one at the right you could have a high temperature return say for instance on the left and a low temperature return to a different boiler on the right or vice versa a low temperature boiler on the left hand side with the return taken from the bottom chamber you can actually just as a matter of interest take boilers in and the vertical chambers the ports looking upwards as well this one could be a flow up where then any zone a port leaving that would become a zone outwards and your return back to the boiler could be any port leaving the lower chamber so it's an incredibly versatile simple little principle but very very easy to adapt to more systems in this situation we're showing a, a unit delivering heat on top this particular unit is a heat pump heat exchanger from a split unit but it could just as easily be a gas boiler or even a, a, a wall hung oil boiler or an oil boiler upstairs whatever but you see that the flow comes off and uh, the boiler and arrives into the top chamber the return carries on down and as with a heat pump or any water um, boiler that has a say small low waterways or small waterways you'd put a strainer on the return back out of the manifold catching any dirt that would go back in to block any heat exchanger that might be in the system this is only necessary where the appliance itself requires a strainer but this is where you would locate it then if for example then you took a zone maybe you want a radiator zone and you want a flow and return to each separate radiator well then you take your flow from the top chamber where you, if you are not using say a boiler on the left hand side you could take flow from the top through the pump head away through your radiators or on whatever on the floor come back around up through a non-return valve you might have an isolation valve so that you could isolate that area that zone and back into the return chamber if you say had a hot water cylinder you would take your flow from the top port or the bottom sorry left hand port which enters the top flow chamber pulls down through the pump up in through the cylinder coil heats the domestic hot water and back around in this example we show a non-return valve fitted here on the return port into the manifold but that's because the pipe drops down goes across and rises back up and in other words it forms a heat trap so but if you were to go directly into the cylinder then you would probably find it better to put your non-return valve feeding into the cylinder here at this location which means when the cylinder is hot heat won't drift back out and be lost on the pipework if you had a circuit upstairs you simply drop down below the unit drop as far as possible I like to drop maybe 300 mil 400 mil or uh, 12 to 15 or 20 inches below the manifold pump down around and back up to your circuit upstairs the non-return valve fitted on the return again will just catch any inadvertent heat drift that would otherwise drift up and heat the radiators upstairs when there was no heat being called for so inside again now you see where the pumps are drawing from the hottest water for the zones 
the pump on the left is going to say radiators. The middle pump here is connected on the flow pipe and is arriving at the top chamber and heating maybe um, under for a heating or a cylinder or whatever. And then your right hand pump could be going upstairs. Any one of those pumps from any one of those uh, ports on the chamber can go uh, and do the job. You don't necessarily have to use a particular one for a particular job. What of course is critical is the flow must arrive in the top chamber. So at the left hand side, or the top left hand side uh, uh, connection could also be a flow in and your returns can literally go from any port that enters into the lowest chamber either on the left or anyone underneath so even though we've shown that this has a, a heat appliance connected it still has some spare connections uh, say for instance this one could be used for a zone or an additional boiler maybe a solid fuel boiler and this could actually be another zone return coming back in. Um, and then the same applies on the other side. You actually still have a port over here and you have a spare port at the side which we'll talk about as well separately in a while. But that means that this unit can actually handle a boiler and up to say five zones. Again making it a very very economical addition to a job. If we move on again you see that we're now standing back and looking at the system. This really could not be simpler. It's by the book correct in how a system would be designed. Your neutral point, make sure the system deaeration is done properly. The boiler is piped away and um, collecting the heat from the coldest part of the neutral point and delivering it back into the upper chamber. And each pump is pulling from the uh, manifold and doing its respective job, heating the cylinder, but also pushing back to the boiler. So again, uh, very, very neat, very simple, very cost effective. So the Energy Zone Manifold is manufactured by Energy Awareness, powered by CBOX. Hopefully you'll find this uh, informative. If you have any other questions, please contact us by email at info at nrgawareness.com. Thanks for your time. Hope you enjoyed it.